saying that this pattern is by Crouton Crochet or Crouton Crafts on YouTube. I'm not sure which one, I always forget. But they're the original creator of this pattern or they're the person that I found this pattern from. I'll link their video right at the top of my description if you want to go check that one out. This is just going to be a more in-depth tutorial for a lot of beginners. So if you're a beginner and you're not familiar with the stitches, I got you on this one. This reef literally takes less than 10 minutes if you're familiar with the stitches. If not, it might take a little bit longer. It's also super cheap to make because you're not using a lot of yarn and we're using a hair tie in the middle. So we'll go over the materials now. Starting off with yarn, I'm using a weight four yarn with this project. I recommend using a weight 4 yarn and the corresponding hook size for it because it helps you not have any gaps in your projects. So I'm using weight 4 medium in sage green, red, and white. For this project, I'm going to be using a 4mm crochet hook. I have my crafting scissors as well. A darning needle or sewing needle, depending on what you call it. This is going to help us add the details to the reef. Now, a stitch marker is not required for this project, but I'm going to use it anyway to get this circle of the wreath. I'm using a hair tie. Please use a clean hair tie. Imagine gifting this to someone and it has a whole lot of hair in it. Um, you can use anything circular that'll keep its shape. I've seen people use wires for this. Just anything circle that is not going to fall apart. But yeah, hair tie I find gives the perfect amount of space between. And I mean, you could technically use this as a scrunchie after. <laughs> to start off, we're going to take our hair tie and our green yarn or any yarn that you're using for the leaves. And to attach this easily onto the hair tie, I'm just going to secure it with a knot. This is like the easiest way to do it. You can also join it with a single crochet, but I find, you know, this is, <laughs> this is the easiest thing. And if your hair tie is like mine, it has this little piece of glue here. So I'm just going to use this knot to cover that area so that we get this nice and smooth wreath. Now taking our crochet hook, I am going to just pull up a little bit of yarn here so that I can maintain my tension. You're going to want to put your crochet hook through the hair tie, grab up a loop like this, and to secure this we're just going to be chaining one. So yarn over and then pull through that loop that you just pulled up. I'll do this again to show you so we have our knot on our hair tie. Put your crochet hook through, grab that piece of yarn, pull through, and then to secure it, yarn over and pull through that loop. And now it's secured, you can give it a little tighten. And now we're going to start with our double crochets. So we're going to be double crocheting around the entirety of the ring. Let's start with three chains so that we can prepare. So to do a chain, I'm going to yarn over pull through the loop on my hook, yarn over, pull through the loop on my hook, and then one more time, yarn over, pull through the loop on my hook. And now we're going to start with our double crochets. So to do a double crochet, I have a full in-depth video that I'll link down below if you need a little bit more practice, but if you know how to do one, I'll just review. We're going to yarn over so that we prep the yarn on our hook, and now pay attention closely because this might be a little bit tricky. Put the crochet hook back into the hair tie. We're going to yarn over, grab that yarn, and pull through the hair tie. So now we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Now we have two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the last two. That is our first double crochet. To keep track of our stitches, I'm going to be using a stitch marker. And you can just place this on that first double crochet right here, secure that on, just so we know where we started. We're gonna do another double crochet. So yarn over, put your hook through that hair tie, yarn over, pull through the hair tie, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, and yarn over, pull through the last two. Now, depending on the size of the ring shape that you're using, you might have to do a lot of double crochets are not too many, so the stitch count for this is not going to be accurate for each specific person's project. So just continue doing the double crochets around until you have no gaps and all of the area is covered with double crochets. I'll do it a few more times. So yarn over, go through that hair tie, yarn over, pull through the hair tie. We have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two and just continue this all the way around.
will interrupt you for a minute here, but because we don't want our hair tie or whatever ring you're using to form outside here, always every couple of double crochets, kind of slide everything over so that you get a nice covered hair tie. Also be aware you don't want to push them too far back because I'll show you an example here. If you push them too far back, your wreath might start to curl like this. I mean, it's a wreath, it's not going to be perfect, but I always like to keep mine kind of more straight, so just do it to, you know, push it around so that it covers it but doesn't make it wavy. And I'll just continue my double crochets until I reach my first stitch. It's really important that you take your time with this part because you want your tension to maintain the same across the entirety of these stitches or else your wreath might come loose which we don't want to spend all this time <laughs> on making a pretty Christmas ornament and have it come undone. So just make sure you are taking your time, especially if you struggle with tension. So I have about one more space here to fill with a double crochet. I'm gonna do that. And then that'll be the end of our round with double crochets. Now to connect both of these together so that it makes one nice circle, I'm going to take out my stitch marker, but remember what stitch you're taking it out of. And we're going to do a slip stitch to connect them. So put your hook into that stitch that you just took your stitch marker out of. Yarn over, pull through that stitch. Now you have two loops on your hook. Continue pulling through that last loop on your hook. I always like to give it a good tighten. The border is something called a V-stitch. It sounds complicated, but it's actually really, really easy. Now, because like I said, depending on how big the circle that you're using is, you can have a different number of stitches than me, and we might end on an odd number or anything like that. That's okay. It gets covered up super easily by the ruffles and everything. So let's continue with this. I'm going to cut off my green yarn because we're not working with that anymore. We're gonna fasten off, so just pull your hook and the yarn will come right through. Now we're gonna take our white yarn and putting our hook back into that stitch that we just removed our stitch marker from and fastened off, I'm putting the white yarn on my hook and pulling it through just like this so that we're able to tie a knot and attach the white yarn to our round. To do this, we're going to make it super simple, just tie that knot onto that stitch. <laughs> now we're going to insert our hook back into that stitch. So this is the stitch that has the white on it. Insert the hook back into that stitch, yarn over, and pull through. We've now created a loop on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through that loop. That's going to secure our white yarn onto this next round. Working into the next stitch over here, we're going to start our V-stitch pattern. So into this next stitch, insert your hook, and we're going to do a single crochet. So yarn over, pull through. We have two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through both of those loops on your hook. Now we're going to do two chains. So yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. And into that exact same stitch over here that we just put our single crochet chain two in, we're going to go back into it. So insert your hook back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook to do that single crochet. If you can see here, this is the next stitch that is beside this one that we just put all of our stuff in. I am going to be skipping this stitch. So skip this stitch, go into the next stitch, and insert your hook. We're going to place a single crochet. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. Then we're going to chain two again, one, two, and back into that exact same stitch, we're going to place another single crochet. This is the next stitch, skip it and go into the next one, place a single crochet, chain two, and then go back into that same stitch and place a single crochet. So the pattern is skip a stitch, then go into the next stitch, place a single crochet, chain two, and then back into that same stitch, single crochet. And you're just gonna wanna do this all the way around until you reach the top part of your wreath. And again, you might end on an odd number, but that's okay, because leaves are imperfect anyways. 
Okay, so I'm doing my last V stitch here. So I'm skipping this one, going into the next one, placing a single crochet, and then chain two, and then my last single crochet. Because we don't want to leave a gap here, I'm just going to be going into any random stitch over here is totally fine. Inserting my hook, of course I get tangled in my yarn, yarn over, pull through, and then continue pulling through to create a slip stitch to join. Now taking our scissors, just cut off kind of a short tail end because we don't really need it to be too long, and then fasten off by pulling up your yarn with the hook. To kind of hide the loose ends, so this one is already kind of crocheted into our hair tie. This one we can just snip right off since it's already secured in there. And do that. But for the ones over here, if you flip it over, you probably have a whole bunch of random little things. Now since this is going to be, I'm placing mine on a garland, you can even do an ornament. I'm not really going to be too fussy about tucking in all the ends because you're not going to be able to see them. So I'm just securing this one with a double knot. I'm going to just go into quite literally any stitch and just try and weave these ends in. Again, I'm not being too fussy. Usually I would, if I'm doing amigurumi or stuff like that, I would take my time with this, but since it's going to be attached to a piece of string anyways, when I put it on the garland, I don't really care that much about how it looks. But obviously if you're doing this or you're giving it as a gift to someone, try to clean that up a little bit nicer. You can even secure the area with tacky glue so that it dries clear. But yeah, so this is the front of our reef. Make sure you're using the front of our reef for the next part because the back over here, the stitches don't look as nice, but the stitches on this side look really, really nice. So use this side for this next part. Finally, the last step is to add the little red decoration. So I usually add a bow and then a few of these little holly berries, I guess what they're called. So I'm taking my darning needle or my sewing needle and I want to attach kind of a longer strand of red yarn or whatever color you want your bows and berries to be but I would say make it a bit longer for the berry part. We want to go in through the back of our crochet project so that all of our ugly tail ends are at the back and we don't see them at the front. Now depending on the size of your ring you can kind of map out where you want the berries to be so I think I want to do one here, here, here and here. You can do as many as you like, obviously, be creative. But yeah, I'm gonna start by going in through the back here and just pulling it, my long strand of yarn. It, it doesn't need to be this long. I think I wasn't paying attention when I cut it. And then to make the very, I'm just gonna go a few stitches away from where I initially put my hook in and just go back in. Pull that all the way through. And I just go back through that first spot just because I want it to be a bit of a chubbier berry. A nice plump berry that's been growing on there for a while. And then back through that same spot just to give it kind of like a double layer of that. You can even push them out like this as well. And you can go in and out as many times as you want. And then to do the other side, I'm just going to go... Let's put one, yeah, right here should be fine. Now, if you flip this over, it's gonna look absolutely crazy. If you want to clean these up, what you could do is just snip off that excess yarn. We don't need this anymore. But what I usually do is I kind of tuck these ends into here. But if you're like me and you're kind of lazy, you could <laughs> just glue them. You could also individually do each berry so that they don't have these lines. But I mean, like, you're not going to see it. So it's not affecting me that much. I'm kind of a lazy crocheter. Maybe you guys can relate, but I'm just going to tuck these ends in. So I'm going through where the hair tie is those stitches that we made and just weaving this through those. Snip the excess off. Now, so it looks crazy on this side, but it looks really cute on this side. I'm hoping that we all know how to do a bow. I mean, does anyone else have like, really vivid memories of trying to learn how to tie their shoes at a young age. 
I still do the double bunny ear method. I get made fun of for it, but whatever. That's what I'm gonna be doing. So I just am placing it kind of in the middle of my wreath here and I put my leftover red yarn onto my darning needle. And I'm just gonna go over, I think maybe two stitches would be good. You can make it as thick as you want. You can even make this a ribbon if you like it to. Pull that through. And this yarn is way too long. So I'm gonna give that a quick snip. And you're just gonna wanna tie the bow, whichever method you use to tie a bow. I won't judge you, cause I'm nice. I love how these turned out. They're so, so cute. You can even go over this if you're using acrylic yarn. This is for acrylic yarn users only with a lighter to soften up the edges and make all the yarn fuzzies go away. Yay, I'm so glad that we got to make these together. Thank you so much. This is the first part of my crochet Christmas charm series. I'm gonna be posting a new video every single day this week to teach you how to make a garland. And at the end, I'll show you how to attach them all. So make sure to stick around for that. And I'll link the other videos as they post down below as well so you can follow along but thank you so much for making this christmas wreath with me i'll see you in my next one